Hello, good morning. Today we are starting the fifth semester of our BSc program. So I am handling the paper quantum mechanics. Here the topic begins with particle properties of waves. So this is the text that is Concepts of Modern Physics by Arthur Weiser. This quantum mechanics is a three credit paper. <coughs> In this uh, first chapter, we are discussing electromagnetic waves, black body radiation, ultraviolet catastrophe, photoelectric effect, nature of light, wave particle duality, Compton effect, its demonstration, pair production, photons, and gravity. And these things are discussed in the second chapter of the text by Arthur Beza. It is a uh, good text, easily readable text. Now, <coughs> I am discussing a small portion of this uh, second chapter. You can see you can say that the introductory sections in classical physics there is a clear distinction between particles and waves so we know what are particles they are possessing properties like uh, mass they have charge so bigger particles they are having some shape and they have some volume etc so when we consider waves in classical physics waves wave is considered as a method of transfer of energy from one place to another place so there are different types of waves some waves require a medium for their transmission from one place to another place some waves do not require a medium for their transmission and waves, those waves which require a medium are called mechanical waves, others are called uh, non-mechanical waves or electromagnetic waves. But actually, there was a clear distinction between waves and particles in classical physics. So we discussed the uh, mechanics of particles in uh, classical physics and also we studied optics of waves, wave optics. Uh, we have studied in uh, classical physics and these were traditionally independent disciplines in classical physics now <coughs> in our physical world we see uh, whatever we see around our in our physical world has roots in the microscopic world that means everything around us is created by molecules, atoms, etc. Atoms are uh, constituted by nuclei and electrons. Inside the nuclei there are protons and neutrons. And protons and neutrons are created by quarks. And basic <coughs> basically everything around us is created by this um, microscopic things but when we go to the microscopic world there is no distinction between particles and waves so in in the microscopic world there is clear distinction between particles and waves we consider particles as something uh, some category of things and waves as other category of things we classical physics we studied these things as different disciplines but when we go to the microscopic world you cannot see any distinction between these two part two things two entities in classical physics electrons are considered as particles and they possess mass and charge they behave according to the laws of particle physics So, because ele you know electrons are possessing mass, electrons are having some charge. So they and though, and though also in some occasion they behave as particles. 
uh, obey the laws of particles. So they were treated as particles in classical physics. But we will find some occasions where electrons express themselves as waves. There are certain situations where electrons behave like, uh, you can see there are some situations electrons are behaving like uh, waves. They are showing some wave properties also. Same way, when we go to the light, light is uh, considered as electromagnetic waves in classical physics. The first theory about uh, regarding light was corpuscular theory and is uh, first proposed by Descartes in 1637 and he proposed that light is made up of small discrete particles called corpuscles. And Newton also worked on this model and in 1672 he tried to give explanation for light reflection and refraction uh, through this particular theory. In some, some way he explained the two phenomena exhibited by light that we know the refraction it satisfies the law of uh, the law of reflection is uh, angle of incidence is equal to angle of refra uh, reflection like that and incident ray reflected ray and the normal are in the same plane all these things and he explained this phenomena uh, newton was able he was able to explain this phenomena using his the corpuscular theory of light but later cosper corpuscular theory could not explain the phenomena like interference, diffraction and polarization. So you may be, you have studied in your plus two about the Young's double slit experiment. So we can explain thus <coughs> the alternative bright and dark fringes in the Young's double slit experiments only by considering the wave nature of light light falling in the dark region where the crust of, of the wave coming from one po one pin hole and the wave coming from the second pin hole reaches there with its trough when crust and trough combines the net amplitude reduces to zero so we can that way we can simply easily explain the dark fringes in that uh, Young's double slit experiment in the same way uh, where bright fringes are occurring when either the crusts of the waves from the two pin holes or the troughs of the waves from the two pin holes are uh, superimposing at that point. And same way diffraction is the bending of light at uh, the edge of some obstacles. That also can be satisfactorily explained using, uh, that cannot be explained by using corpuscular theory, but they can be explained by the wave theory of light. Again, the polarization of light cannot explain by corpuscular theory, but it is can be easily explained by the wave theory of light. So to explain this interference, diffraction and polarization, such when such new phenomena are observed, in 1680 Christian Hygiene's proposed the wave theory of light uh, which satisfactorily explained all the known phenomena at that time. But later on so many other phenomena were observed. So while studying that uh, black body radiation spectrum, so that is the, uh, suppose we plot the, suppose we study the energy emitted from a hot body at different temperatures. For the study, uh, we are measuring the wavelength emitted and versus the energy from that hot body. So we can draw a graph between wavelength versus energy. So in this uh, graph, so you consider the red line here, curve here. So it is written as red star 4000 Kelvin. So don't bother about this star. So simply consider it as a black body at 4000 Kelvin. Here, so you measure, you consider a wavelength say uh, less than this 400 nanometer 
measure the energy emitted by the body at that particular wavelength. Then take the next wavelength, measure the energy emitted by the hot body at that particular wavelength. So you draw a curve between wavelength and energy, it's simply flux. Now you can see that at lower wavelengths, the energy emitted at these wavelengths are very small. When the wavelength increases, energy emit emitted at the corresponding wavelength also increases. And for a particular wavelength, the maximum energy is emitted at that particular wavelength. And after all, on increasing the wavelengths, for other wavelengths, higher wavelengths, when you measure the energies, you can see that energy slowly decreases. So you get a curve like this. So when you increase the temperature of the black body, you will get a similar curve with uh, more flux values corresponding to each wavelength values. So this curve corresponding to 8000, uh, sorry, 6000 Kelvin and this curve corresponding to 18000 Kelvin for a black body. Now, so while discussing about black body, of course you have studied uh, these things in your plus two. So if you hit an copper ball, to 4000 Kelvin, you will get a curve like this. Same way, suppose you heat an aluminum ball to the same temperature, you will get a similar curve. That is a curve with the maximum emission, the maximum emission corresponding to the copper ball is at 700 nanometer. The maximum emission corresponding to the aluminum ball also will be at 700 nanometer. The curve will be similar. Whatever be the material, if we change the material, whatever be the material you are using, the black body spectrum will be the same if the temperature is the same. Of course, the total flux value may be different, but it will be similar. So, it means the maximum emission will happen at the same point. That depends on the temperature. Now, Actually, wave theory failed to explain the black body radiation spectrum. Why at lower, lower wavelengths the, the energies are less and why at higher wavelengths energies are falling like this. And this uh, falling of energy at higher wavelengths, this is uh, usually, uh, sorry, lower wavelengths, that is high. Uh, wavelengths are usually called as uh, ultraviolet catastrophe, lower wavelengths. Now another phenomena where photo, uh, wave theory failed to give satisfactory explanation was the photoelectric effect. So we know photoelectric effect is the phenomenon when light of suitable wavelengths falls on some metal surfaces, electrons are ejected that emitted electrons are called photoelectrons. So there are so many experimental, uh, some of the experimental results could not be explained by the wave theory of light. So one is that photoelectric effect is an instantaneous process. When light falls on the metal surface, immediately electrons are emitted. So as ele electrons are uh, having very small size, according to the wave theory, electrons require a certain amount of few electron volts of energy to escape from the metal surface. So when you give, when you irradiate a metal surface with some light, it is very difficult to gain, to concentrate this much energy to a very small area of the metal surface. So then only electrons can occur that much energy and escape according to the wave theory. So still it is happening instantaneously. So that means wave theory cannot explain how this is an instant, why this is an instantaneous process. And second one is that uh, there is a minimum frequency required for photoelectric emission to happen. And third one is that when light of particular frequency falls, and if you measure the kinetic energy of the emitted electrons, a particular frequency of light is falling and you are measuring the kinetic energy of the emitted electrons, 
you can see that whatever be the intensity of the light falling at that particular frequency the kinetic energy will not is not affected by the intensity of incident light whatever be the intensity of light the emitted electrons will have the same kinetic energy if the frequency of the incident light is same on the other hand keeping intensity same if you are increasing the frequency of light the emitted electrons are having more and more energy energy of the emitted kinetic energy of the emitted electrons increases with the increase in the frequency of the incident light and again wave theory failed to explain this phenomenon so that you, you will study these things in detail in the next sections and another thing is that wave theory failed to explain the compton effect so this is written here this is another effect that is correctly predicted by the photon model and not by the wave model so i haven't mentioned anything about photon so you will get discuss anyway you know it so we can discuss that things in detail in the next sections again wave theory could not explain the compton effect we will study compton effect in detail later that means light can behave but this phenomena can be explained only by assuming the particle nature of light that is uh, photo uh, the black body radiation spectrum photoelectric effect uh, compton effect all these things all these phenomena can be explained satisfactorily explained by assuming only the wave nat particle nature of light not by the wave nature of light so that means light can behave like a wave or like a particle depending on the situation in certain situations it behaves like a particle and certain other situations it behaves like a wave that means light is showing dual nature same as the case we have discussed about electrons electrons are generally in classical physics considered as particles but in certain situations it shows the properties of waves also particles are also, are also capable of showing wave nature this wave particle duality is a central point uh, we are discussing in the modern physics that actually this point is the, this is the starting point uh, for a new branch of physics called uh, named modern physics and leading to uh, which leads to quantum mechanics thank you